The structuring is a new way in ES6 to declare or to assign values from arrays and objects using a very special syntax. Hi, my name is Shannon Temple and this is Temple Coding. We can use the structuring to extract values from existing arrays and objects. So let's start with arrays, just because they're easier to understand. So, before ES6 and the structuring, when we would like to find a specific value from an array and assign it to a variable, we would declare the variable using var, give it a name, and access the array using an index. For instance, I'd like to grab the first value from the moves array and assign it to a variable called favorite. So, I'm declaring a variable called favorite and accessing the array using the index 0. We could do the same thing, and in my opinion, in a more elegant way, using the structuring. When the structuring an array, we'll be using brackets, and inside the brackets we type the name of the new variable we want. We have to start the expression using let, because we're declaring a new variable. We could use var. It would also work, but I prefer to always use let. Ok, back to the structuring. We have brackets, and inside the brackets the name of the variable which in this case is favorite, and finally we are assigning the array to this new variable. Now, if I log the favorite variable to the console, we are going to see the value of the first item of the array. So what happened? Let's just take a moment and look at this. I'm declaring a new variable because I'm using the let keyword at the beginning of the line, and the variable I'm declaring is called favorite. Now, because the name of the variable being declared is surrounded by brackets, JavaScript will be expecting that an array will be assigned to this variable. That's the key to the structuring arrays, to use the same syntax that we use when creating a new array literal. Ok, what if I'd like to create a second variable for the second item of the array? To do that, I just have to give it a name and separate the variables with a comma. What this means is, I can declare a variable for each position of the array that I want just by reproducing the same syntax of an array literal, but using let or var before it. Cool! And that's how JavaScript knows which element from the array it will look for and assign to the variable. If it's the first element in the destructuring expression, it will look for the first element in the array. In this case, the value, the matrix, will be assigned to favorite. If it's the second element in the expression, it will look for the second element in the array, and so on. So, what if my favorite movie was the second movie in the array? That's simple. When the structuring, I don't have to have a variable for each position. I can have empty positions. For instance, in this case, I could leave the first position empty, separated by a comma, and have the favorite variable in the second position of the expression. Simple as that. JavaScript you will know that I'm looking for the second element. If I'd like to assign the third value to the favorite variable, I'd have two commas and then the name of the variable. Note that because I have the let before the destructuring expression, I'm declaring a new variable. If I already have a declared variable, I don't need to use the keyword let. In this case, I'm not declaring a new variable, I'm just assigned to, a, to an existing one. So, if I move the let declaration to the line above, it works the same way. Now, what it has changed is that I'm not declaring a new variable, instead, I'm assigning a value to an existing one. It's important to know this, because we cannot mix both things, declaring a new variable and assigning a value to an existing one. So, in our example, we already have a declared variable. If I try to declare a new variable, an error will be thrown. What if we're destructuring an array and that array doesn't have the element we're looking for? Let's say we have an empty array and we're trying to access its first value. Well, what will happen is that an undefined value will be assigned to the variable. No errors here. But one thing we could do when destructuring is to have default values. So, if in this example we'd like to have a default value of Star Wars, for instance, what we can do is insert an equals and the default value we want. I use a string here, but it could be any value, a number, a boolean, an object, or even another array. Now let's move on to the structuring objects. 
When destructing objects, the goal is the same. We want to declare or assign values to variables from other objects. But when destructing objects, instead of using bracket, brackets, we'll be using braces. So let's say we have a movie object. It's a simple object. We have a title, an year, a genre, and a cast which is an array of other objects. And let's say we wanted to assign the title and the year to two new variables called x and y. We could declare each variable and assign the values to them as in regular ES5. Or we could declare the variables using a destructuring expression. To do that, I have to start the expression using the keyword let. After that, we use braces, and inside the braces, the first part of the expression is the name of the property we're looking for inside the object. I'm first going to assign the title property to an X, so the property I'm looking for is title. After that, we use a colon to separate the property of the variable being declared, in this case, X. If I want to do the same for other properties, I just have to separate them by a comma. So to declare a variable Y and assign its value from the property year of the movie object, I can write year column Y. Finally, I have to assign the movie object to the expression. Just to make this crystal clear, I'm declaring two new variables, X and Y. I know that because of the let at the beginning of the line. Next. I'm assigning the movie object to those variables. But I'm not just assigning the object, I'm destructuring it. And I know that's an object destructuring because of this special syntax using braces. Then I'm looking for a title property in the movie object and assigning its value to the X variable. And I'm looking for the year property in the movie object and assigning its value to the Y variable. That's great! Now. I don't like to have my variables named X and Y, so I'm going to give them some more meaningful names like title and year. Now that's much better, the variables have better names. The only problem is that the expression says title, column title, and year, column year. I don't know about you, but when I look at that, it seems a bit confusing, and for someone not used to the structuring, this could be even more confusing. For instance, one could ask, which side is the new variable and which side is the name of the property? Well, the, re the response is simple and is always the same. The left side is always the name of the property and the right side is always the variable. But you can do better than this. When the property and the variable have the same names, we can omit the column and the variable name. So, if we just leave title, comma, year, and all this equals movie, it will have the same effect as before. Nice! Much more clear and concise. We can also mix both uses, so if I'd like to also declare a new variable G and assign the genre to it, I could write genre column G. As for declaring new variables and assigning values to existing ones, the rules are the same as when we were de destructuring arrays. We can either assign values to existing variables or declare new ones, but you cannot mix both use cases, ok? What we can do though is to mix object and array destructuring. So let's say I wanted a variable called main row and I'd like to assign the first object of the cast array to this variable. First, let me remove this genre assignment and the year just to keep it clean. Now, I want to assign the cast property to a variable, so I start writing cast column. Ok, that's good, but we don't want the whole array, we just want the first element of the array, so we will be destructuring that array. And how we do that? That's right, we use brackets and declare the main row variable inside the brackets. What this syntax is saying is exactly the same thing as before, we are looking for the first element inside an array that happens to be a property named cast inside an object. Neat! Let me just write a console.log to make sure that this is working. And of course it is. But what if I don't want the complete object with the name of the actor and all? I just want the name of the character or role. In this case, I just want the value new. How do I do that? 
Well, we happen to know that the cast array is an array of objects, so we could use object destructuring. We add braces inside the brackets to say that we are destructuring an object and we want the role property and we are going to assign its value to a main role variable. It's an object destructuring inside an array destructuring inside another object destructuring. Now that's tricky. Let's just recap, because that shows the power of destructuring. First, we are destructuring the movie object and assigning the value of its title property to a new variable called title. Because both have the same name, we don't need the column syntax. Next, we are destructuring the cast property to a new variable and with a different name, so we have to use the column. But we don't want all the elements of the cast array, we just want the first one, so we are destructuring the array. To finish, the first element of the array is an object, and we don't need the complete object, just one property, the row property. So, we are also destructuring this new object looking for the row property, and finally, we are declaring the name of the new variable and calling it main row. Ouch, that may seem complicated, but after getting used to it, we can see its power. As with arrays, we can also have the full values when destructing objects. Let's say that in, the, in this example, we are expecting the object to have a property named Oscars that would contain the number of Oscars a movie won. And if that property would not be found, we'd like to have a variable named Oscars with the value of 0. We can do that by looking for a property named Oscars, then column and the name of the variable. In this case, I'm also using Oscars, and then equals and the default value, which I'm going to be using 0. Or, to keep it simple, we could use the shorthand. If I log the Oscars variable in the console, we'll see the value 0. That's because the movie object does not have an Oscars property. And if we had an Oscars property in the movie object, that would be assigned to the variable. So let's say our movie object has an Oscars property with the value of 5. Now we can see that the value 5 is logged in the console. I guess by now we've already seen some good uses of this structuring. I just want to show you a few more examples. For instance, when using the new for off loops. Let's get the moves array back and loop through the array logging it. That's nothing new, but arrays in ES6 have a new method called entries. I'm not going to explain how the for off loop works, neither how the entries method works. Just know for now that entries method returns an array for each element containing the index of the element and its value. So, if I just change this code to call the entries method, we can see that we are logging arrays with an index and a value. Now, knowing that, and if we want to capture both values in different variables, we could destructure this array. To do that, we just have to add brackets and name both variables. In this case, I'm using index and title. Another use would be in a case where a function returns an object as its result and we are interested in just some properties of the resulting object. One last use case I want to talk about is for default values in functions. It's very common to accept an object in a function as a configuration for that function. Let's say we have a function called ajaxCall. For the first argument, we're expecting an URL. And for the second argument, we're expecting an object with some options. To keep it simple, let's say that the only two options I'm expecting are method and data type. So I want to know if my ajaxCall will be a get or a post, and if the data type we'll be, we'll be receiving is JSON or HTML. For those options, I also want to set default values. I know there are different ways we can do this, but today I'm going to show you how to do it using the structuring. For the second parameter, because I'm going to use the structuring, I have to use braces. Then, I know I'm expecting an object with a property called method, and I want to give it a default value. The default value of method will be a string get. The second option I'm expecting is called data type. Here, I'm also giving a default value, 
so I have to declare the name of the variable. And the default value of data type will be JSON. Now I'm adding some logs to see that working. And if I call the Ajax call function, just with the URL and an empty object as a second parameter, the default value is for the, for the method and data type will be logged. If I pass in a data type with the value of HTML, then the, then the default value of method will be logged and the value passes as a parameter, in this case HTML, will be logged. What if I don't pass a second argument, if I just pass the URL? Can you guess what will happen? Well, we're gonna have an error. That's because we're not passing a second parameter, so the value of the second parameter is undefined. And of course, we cannot look for properties in an undefined value. To solve this problem, we have to give an empty object as a default value to the second argument. Now, in this case, we don't pass a second argument to the function. Instead of an undefined value, the second argument will receive an empty object as a value. And JavaScript can look for properties in an empty object. But because we, it will not find it, the default values of the destructing expression will be used. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.